Good afternoon. Let's uh, let's get started. Okay, well, look, thank you for coming. This is a uh, uh, full uh, meeting of the House Motor Vehicles Committee. Uh, first one of the session. I, I tend to hold off on uh, these things until we get a uh, quorum of bills. And, um, and we've got that now, and we're going to need to move on them and uh, get it done by the 30th day. So let me start off with a word of prayer this afternoon. If you join me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today, just another day of life. Another day of our heart beating and our mind operating, and we pray, Father, that our emotions and our and our intellect will work together uh, for an outcome that honors you and these bills that we take a look at today. Thank you for, again for this, everybody here and the opportunities that we have every day to serve you, and I pray this in the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we're going to, first thing on the agenda is to uh, adopt the rules. You all have a copy of the rules in your, uh, in your folder. Uh, these rules are going to look a little different. Uh, for you new members of the committee, uh, they're going to look at a little different because several years ago we used to have to deal with um, uh, uh, specialty tags, and uh, and it was always a, a battle to figure out how we were going to do it. We adopt the rules uh, starting on, on the second page uh, so that uh, special license plates have a treatment that's equal all across the board. And uh, this is basically for those uh, the tags that are shared revenue tags. In other words, tags where an organization sponsors it and they participate in the revenue from the tag. Uh, we've got a set of rules that uh, from one through uh, nine on, on the uh, second page that uh, deal with the process by which we're, we're going to look at that. That's an agreement with the uh, Department of Revenue. Uh, they fully understand it so that when it, when a bill comes in front of us for a shared revenue tag, which is, by the way, uh, approved as an earmark in, in the Constitution, we pressed a constitutional amendment several years ago to do this, that they all line up together and it all works so that, um, uh, that, that, that the people who are sponsoring do get uh, earmarked uh, for those, uh, those funds that would, would come from that. I want to welcome uh, the new members of the committee. Thank you for joining us this year. Um, everybody seems to like motor vehicles at least one day, and uh, then they uh, then they go to old ways and means and don't like it any day. So, anyway, uh, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Epps is here with us today. Thank you for uh, uh, joining us on this committee. I, wanna, I just want to say that uh, you know when we talk about specialty tags, I mean if we don't get a, a bill for specialty tags, that means there's some virus in the legislature that that nobody's owning up to any of these things. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that over a period of time, uh, this state's lagged in its ability to, to address that from a business standpoint. Um, there are a lot of people who would like to buy tags. We just don't make it easy for them uh, to do that. Uh, and so uh, we're, uh, I've asked uh, uh, Vice Chairman Epps to, uh, over the summer, uh, to take a look at that and to um, see if we can't make this into a, into a business where people – voluntarily want to participate and share some of their good uh, money with us in terms of buying a tag uh, in the state of Georgia. Second thing uh, I want to tell the committee is that um, over the last summer we did have a, uh, we did have a study committee uh, on Title 40. Most of the work that we get involves Title 40 law. And uh, that study committee uh, has, has, is almost concluded. We'll have a report probably next week where we all can agree. And there's a bill uh, that addresses several areas uh, in Title 40. Uh, that we're going to drop a bill uh, after the 30th day. It'll lay over till next year, uh, but we'll be conducting uh, some committee meetings uh, over the interim uh, to look at the specific elements of this bill. This this is not a short bill. This addresses uh, everything from um, uh, from uh, traffic bureaus, which is a tra traffic offense payment type things. Uh, on down to um, uh, driver education organizations and um, a DUI and some other things that, uh, that there should be a general interest in, in being attentive to in terms of what we're attempting to do uh, to improve uh, the safety of uh, the state of Georgia and the way we do business. So that's what's on the agenda 
uh, for um, uh, for our committee over the uh, over the interim. Uh, but right now, uh, we've got a number of bills, and uh, we're going to assign some of them to a subcommittee. There's two subcommittees that you've got. Did I ask for a, a motion on the rules? No. I need a motion to pass the rules. Any second? All in favor say aye. Aye. aye the rules are passed. Okay. Um, we're going to move on and assign uh, these to subcommittees. We, we have two subcommittees, uh, the one on tags and titles. Uh, that will be uh, chaired by uh, uh, Vice Chairman Epps, and I've asked uh, Chairman Battles to, uh, uh, to uh, chair the Driver Safety and, and Services uh, uh, Subcommittee. So we're going to assign some, uh, some of these uh, to them. And uh, if you would, it, it, uh, Craig, why don't we just read the, the caption on, uh, on a few of these? You don't have the captions. Okay. <laughs> you want these? Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm not sure I have it. All right. Here's what we're going to do. In light of that, uh, I'm just going to tell you what, what the bill's about as we assign it to the subcommittee. So, and there, there are four of them we're going to hear. Actually, more than that. Uh, there'll be uh, six of them that we'll hear, actually, in, uh, in committee today, and we'll pass out. Uh, if it's the committee's will that they do be passed out. I don't want, to, I don't want anybody to feel like they can't. Uh, take exception to any of these bills. If you do have an issue with some of them, you know, uh, let's let's get it on the table and we will hold them over. Uh, the, the, there are House Bill 31 is a hands-free communication device uh, bill from Representative Mayo. That's going to driver safety and services. Uh, uh, Representative Shaw has a Class E, Class F free to volunteer firefighters bill. That's going. That's House Bill 88. That's uh, that that uh, will also go to driver safety and services. Uh, there's a, uh, another a bill that has to do with hands-free uh, from Representative Williams. That's uh, House Bill 93. Again, that's going to go to driver safety uh, and services. Uh, House Bill 459, uh, uh, excuse me, not 459. Uh, well, 463 happens to be uh, my bill, uh, which, is <laughs> which we're going to sign to uh, – uh, Vice Chairman Epps' Tags and Titles Committee. It's the international registration plan changes uh, that will hopefully streamline our whole process, make it a lot easier to do business for the truckers in Georgia. Uh, uh, Representative uh, Hitchens uh, does have a bill. By the way, these are going to be heard uh, tomorrow. Uh, but, Bill, as I, I see you're here today. Why don't you just give us an overview of uh, your bill, 459, for today, and then we'll hear it in subcommittee tomorrow. Yeah, you're on. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 that's fine. Well, we can hear it in subcommittee tomorrow, and then we'll do 365 after we uh, after we get ready. I'm sorry. I skipped down. I just missed, missed it right away. All right, anyway, House Bill 459, uh, which is imposing some uh, left-hand Lane change uh, speed limits uh, from Representative Hitchens will be in uh, driver safety and services. And uh, Chairman Battles, you're going to hear that tomorrow, uh, too, correct? Okay. All right. Uh, let's, um, let's move to um, – uh, I'm going I'm to ask Representative Powell. We're gonna, first bill we're going to take up today is uh, House Bill 323. It's authored by uh, uh, Representative Powell, Powell, or Chairman Powell, I should say. Excuse me, Chairman Powell. And uh, uh, you're on. Thank you, uh, Chairman Rice. Uh, to the new members of the committee, you're fixing to hear a term that you're going to hear an awful lot on this committee from time to time. Bring to you substitute HB 323, LC number 3529-23ERS. Term I'm fixing to use, this is a compliance bill. Uh, that puts uh, this is an annual bill that the Department of Public Safety brings forward, puts them in compliance with changes in the uh, Federal Motor Carrier Act and a lot of the safety regulations. In this one, is moving a lot of the language from uh, rules and regs into statute. A lot of this is caused uh, because of the situation two years ago. We had passed a piece of legislation that moved uh, control of motor carriers, the rest of the control of motor carriers from the Department of uh, Public, uh, 
Public Service Commission over to DPS. And this is another year of change up to clarify language and the such as that. Uh, specifically, there's uh, not a lot of change. There's no changes in state law. Uh, some of the reasons, if you ask why they're moving a lot of this from uh, rule and reg into statute, some of the prosecutors in the state have uh, refused to uh, carry forth uh, cases against a lot of the violators uh, because it wasn't in statute, and these were put into statute. Uh, Captain Johnny Jones from Motor Carrier Division is going to fix the move right up here to the microphone so he can answer any specific questions you may be having on a section-by-section -section basis. Uh, I will say up front, uh, we have been working on this bill for Oh, I guess well over a month now. Uh, a lot of people has been in and out, been a lot of changes and a cleanup language, basically over verbiage. Uh, even at the late date, as much as less as an hour ago, we've uh, decided that we need to strike uh, on this bill. Line 155 through 163. You'll make that in the form of motion to proper time, I assume. Proper time. And also, we're going to strike section 14, lines 560 through 583, and then renumber accordingly. That's uh, 560. 560 must be on a different page. All right, line, 150, line 155 Wait a second. through 163, and, and renumber accordingly. And? And from line 560 through 583 and renumber accordingly. That section 14 is uh, right. Section is 14 in its entirety is stricken. Okay. All righty. You and Johnny, you want to you tell us, uh, for the committee's purposes, tell us who you are and, uh, and uh, who you represent and uh, Certainly. what your interest in the bill. Captain Johnny Jones, Department of Public Safety, assigned to the Motor Carrier Compliance Division. Also, uh, at the time, present time, serving as executive officer in Commander of Regulations Compliance Section. Okay. Um, you want me to go on into the bill? Yes. Uh, a lot of this is cleanup from 865, and some of it also is to mirror state law defin some state law definitions to federal law definitions. Of course, we get Motor Carrier Safety Assistance Program grants. And the feds always encourage us to mirror our definitions as theirs. Uh, we've undergone an audit in the past that uh, that uh, they were very uh, seemed very serious about us mirroring some of our definitions after theirs. And it, just, it also makes for ease of enforcement. And if you look at line number 40 through 48, basically that's just a mirror of federal law. In other words, for a person to be a minimum of 18 years old to operate in intrastate commerce, and he has to be 21 years old to operate in interstate commerce that's outside the boundaries of Georgia or hauling interstate freight. Uh, the federal government requires all drivers of commercial motor vehicles to be at least 21. And a commercial motor vehicle uh, defined basically as any uh, vehicle having a GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating, in excess of 10,000, uh, transporting for compensation more than eight passengers, or not for compensation more than 15, transporting a placardable quantity of hazardous material, definition of commercial motor vehicle. So that section right there through 48 is just mirroring our definitions and our law uh, to federal law. Uh, going on down, to the next section that we changed was on page three. Well, yours may be different. Page 83, excuse me, line 83 to 86. Last year during House Bill 865, basically what 865 did, for those of you who may not remember, it picked up a lot of the code section codified in 46-7 and set it over into our already existing commercial vehicle safety regulations in 40-1. However, there was one section left out that was in the Public Service Commission Utilities Code in 46-2 that didn't get moved over, and we moved that over in this bill, and that's the 
the phrasing from 83 to 86. Moving on to line 109. Basically what this does is it codifies our safety regulations. One of the things that we have experienced is some prosecutors have decided that they would not prosecute our cases, hours of service cases, records of duty status, commonly called logbooks, based on the fact that we were writing a citation based on a rule <coughs> and that it was a constitutional issue. So what we did instead, rather than write it on a rule, we codified it into actual Georgia law, and our citations will reflect that. And that goes all the way down through line 121. Further down, you will see 133 through 141, and basically last year, it, it was really confusing on, on what the regulation compliance section was supposed to do. The regulation compliance section is part of the Motor Carrier Compliance Division, which is part of the Department of Public Safety, and we just wanted to clarify that. Further down, line number one, One fifty five, it was all of section A. All of section A in one fifty five through one sixty three. We're not repealing that. We're striking that and leaving it as is as it stands in Georgia law now. So we cross that section out. The uh one sixty four all the way through Line 222, we were, st we were strengthening our regulations in regard to what we can do when, in regard to hearings, in regard to people paying their civil penalties. If they don't pay them, we have some other recourse other than just turning it over to a collection agency. One of the things that Public Service Commission experienced was that a lot of times they imposed heavy civil penalties and they had a team of lawyers, of three lawyers I believe, that were served as collection agents and sometimes it seemed more expensive to collect than the actual fines were. But there was no recourse as far as taking a lien on a vehicle or anything of that nature. So we're just trying to strengthen that the best we can. And to, uh, and I believe, yeah. That's what we're trying to do in that section. In 40-1-56.1, which is line 224 through 304, it basically goes hand in hand with what I just spoke about. Strengthening our ability and, and also making our hearing processes a lot easier. What we've had to do in the past is that when someone made application for a certificate, such as a limousine certificate, limousine carrier certificate, household goods carrier certificate, passenger carrier certificate, when they made application, we had to put it out for a hearing. We put it out and had to post it by law in the Fulton County Daily Report. No one ever showed up to those hearings, and it cost money for us to, to advertise in the Fulton County Daily Report. So what we wanted to do, basically, is advertise it on our website instead of uh, having to advertise it. And it also makes it quicker for us and quicker for the motor carrier to go ahead and start doing business and making money. In uh, on line number five, excuse me, 315, basically we just clarified what commissioner meant in that definition. We also clarified there's law that exempts cor corporate sponsored van pools from certain regulations, but there was no definition to go along with what a corporate sponsored van pool was. So in the enforcement, 
of it, it's easier for us to know exactly who's exempt. So we have a definition here for a corporate sponsored van pool. We don't have a whole lot of those around, I don't think, anymore. Down on line number 333, for compensation or for hire. That's just a mirror of a federal definition of for hire. Line number 405, still in the definition section, permit. We had no definition for a permit. We also wanted to expand it out to electronic permits. Four forty one, line number four forty one and four forty two. We just wanted to clarify the fact that motor carriers still had to meet the fitness requirements even though they have a certificate. And that just strengthens our enforcement. Section number 10, which is line 488 through 490, is what I mentioned earlier about us posting it on the website rather than having to put it in the Fulton County Daily Report. We have our own, for, for those of you who'd like to look, is www.gamccd.net. We have hearing notices posted on there already. We post them there and we post them in the Fulton County Daily Report. So it's something that the customers would already know about, most of them. On uh, line number 497, 497 through five, 509, which is Section A, we're striking that out. We're, we're, we're not repealing that. Section 11, I think, is it not? Yes, sir. Section 11. We're not repealing that. Isn't that right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's hold on for a second. Uh, uh, I've been I've been letting Johnny present, and uh, I was going to come back for questions on the, the individual components of the bill. Um, but I'm going to accept that at this point in time, and just and, and allow some questions on this particular issue because I know it's been brought up as an issue uh, in terms of the or property provision. Uh, and so I just want to make sure that what you're telling us is that. That you're not going to, you're going to. This bill is going to be amended to include uh, the original language, which is the or property language. Is that, yes, sir. Is that it right? will go back to the way it originally originally read. Is that the, is that the, the premise of the author, uh, Mr. Powell? So you're saying now we want to add property back in? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We 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 agreed in the hall to do that earlier. Okay, and that takes place at several points. Uh, at least one other point uh, on page 13, section nine. Or property on line 455. Yes, sir. Who wouldn't know? Yeah, just cross out section 11. That's all. We're we saying delete section 11. Yes, sir. You make you make that amendment offer when you want when we get there. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's uh, let's move ahead with uh, the rest of it. Okay. And in 514, we were just clarifying that and making sure that it mentioned certificate of permit. And that goes along with codification of our other rules. We want to make sure we have statutory Georgia law so that we can write the citations we need to write on rather than writing on a rule. And That's pretty much it there, and we go to line number 562, or section 14. Section I think 14, the, five, the author has already said, Johnny, we're going we're gonna to amend that okay. out. Good deal. Amend that out. And under 601 to 604, all that's basically saying is that it will be con hearings will be conducted in conformance with the Georgia Administrative Procedure Act.
there was some errors in, in 865 last year that was uh, corrected here on line number 612 and 616. The correct code section should have been, instead of 40-1-118, should have been the definition section for limousine carriers, which was 40-1-151. So we made that correction as an error. Uh, under section 18 or page 6, excuse me, line number 625 through 631, we clarified how we need for the limousine carriers who can display the license plate on the front with the necessary information, uh, the way that they had to be marked. And what we did for those limousine carriers that also, or limousine vehicles that also meet the definition of a commercial motor vehicle, they're required instead of the IE1, which uh, really n never was an intrastate exempt vehicle, but instead of IE1, put the USDOT number down there. We can reference that and reference the specific motor carrier by search. And for those that are considered lightweight commercial motor vehicles, and Georgia is unique in having such a definition, is that they will display, instead of the USDOT number, which they're not required to have, a motor carrier <coughs> authorization number, which is issued by our department and searchable by us. Uh, 654. Basically, this is, uh, again, codification of some of the federal rules into state law so that, we, so that we can issue the proper citations on the side of the road for load securement. The 675, 674 and 675 just talks about the fees uh, that we collect on non-consensual towing. And that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, thank you, John. That completes the presentation of the bill um, by the author and by the department. Uh, there are some questions here that I will uh, I'll recognize uh, here. Let's see. Number 24 is Mr. Battles down there. Okay, right. Chairman Battles. Yes, could you um, uh, clarify to me <clears throat> on line uh, 232? has to do, well, you can start up at 230. Uh, the assessment and the lien on the identified motor vehicle, I understand all that, but it says it's superior to, uh, to all liens except the liens of, for taxes and perfected security interest. Can you tell me any other liens that might be associated with uh, these vehicles? Let me defer that one to our legal, please. Thank you. Huh? Well, they've got no. They got that. The perfected security. I think Jacqueline Bunn, Department of Public Safety Legal Services. I think it was really just a catch-all to try to make sure that we had priority in trying to to go against these companies if they're doing something illegal. It, it follow up. It, I I think the uh, if I might follow up, Mr. Chairman. Um, the question was, it, it's, give me some examples of other liens that are are often placed on vehicles. Um, I, I understand a security lien, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can understand a tax maybe for uh, their ad valorem or, or, or whatever. What other liens might this supersede, since this is superior to any other liens, if, if there are other liens this might be assessed by some government, uh, maybe uh, someone within the state of Georgia, a municipality, that has has filed against this particular motor vehicle. Uh, you're, you're saying that this supersedes anything other than the tax and the security interest that is on that um, on that vehicle. Mr. Snyder, if you want to come forward and help with this, so you're welcome. And I, 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 it would it, it would help me greatly to, it, uh, of of those uh, those types of liens associated sometimes with these vehicles. What are they? And and if we're saying superseding, are we taking the ability for them to collect out of this? I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, I think if it, we we got to look at the whole phrase. Except liens for taxes or perfected security interests mm -hmm. established before the debt to the department was created. So if in fact 
in the example you gave, let's say the taxing authority of a certain county had created a lien and they perfected it, then it would stand it would stand in front of these. Okay. Okay. All right. But th th what they're saying is, is that if there was a judgment lien that somebody had gotten but they had not recorded it yet and perfected it, the departments would come first. But if they had recorded the judgment lien, then it would be coming first before theirs. All right. Okay. Thank it's you. It's kind of a race to the courthouse. I, I, I understand that. We okay with that? Yes, sir. And, and this language, it came, we also, during our penalty and hearing, we tried to mirror a lot of it after existing law we already have in the over, about overweights in 32627, I believe it is. So a lot of that language come dead out of there. Okay. Who's number 16 down there? All right. Representative, why don't you ask your question? We're taking that out. Striking the whole section. Yeah. Right. Also with section 421, section 7, line item 421, that property is striking in all other sections. What was the agreement on that? I don't know that everybody heard that, Mr. Schneider. If you'll just stand up again, I know it's I know it's late in the afternoon, but uh, that that section is remaining because the clarification that the department is trying to achieve is they only give out a permit or a certificate in cases of household goods or the transportation of passengers. The mere transportation of other goods, they do not presently give out a certificate of permit, so they were just clarifying that in the law. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, John, well, hold on a second, John. Before you before you sit down, I just want to I want to make sure I understand this. On the last page, the department may assess, collect, retain an application fee in the amount to be determined by the commissioner. Uh, just really quick, you want to tell us w what that might be? Because we don't we normally don't leave these things open in terms of the uh, the application fee. We generally I mean, this this gives the department the opportunity to set the fee. Would you just tell us what the fee might yeah, be? Yeah, the, the fees currently are set by PSC rule, which are basically our rules until we rewrite them and, and adopt them. So it's set by rule already. It came over from Public Service Commission. And it, House Bill 865 gave us the authority to enforce those rules until we rewrote them. That, so that $300 penalty, what it is for non-consensual towing, is set by rule. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. Are there any other questions uh, regarding um, the substitute to uh, House Bill 323? All right. Okay, here we go. You're recognized. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's my pleasure to serve on this committee with you. Thank you, sir. It's uh, amazing. <laughs> Cap Captain Jones, if you wouldn't mind, just it might be my, uh, my newness to the process. Um, if you would help me with line 40 uh, through 42 how does that affect me if I live close to a border um, and drive over that that line basically if you operate in interstate commerce you have to be 21 years of age that does not mean you physically have to go over a state line if you're hauling interstate freight you're in interstate commerce if you actually physically drive over that line in a commercial motor vehicle, it's interstate commerce as well. So when we're changing this, right now I can be 20 and drive to Alabama? No, sir. No. No, sir. You have to be 21 years of age to operate in interstate commerce. Intrastate is actually the trade or transportation within the single state. 
Right. So to operate intrastate, just in Georgia, 18 years of age. Okay. And then, um, thank you, sir. And then on line uh, 653, I'm just kind of bringing it down to my level. What does a commercial motor vehicle, how is that, say I have a, a F550 and I have a, a tractor I'm moving, does that, does that fall under this purview? From one from one farm to another? No, sir. Okay. No, sir, not if it's, it's your personal, unless okay. you're operating in the furtherance of a commercial enterprise. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <coughs> Representative Barr, any other questions uh, on this bill? I, I, I just want to make a comment. You know, break this you up in a little bit. I love what we've got down here is 18 years old to drive a, a commercial vehicle. You can probably date, take your date with you on a Friday night at 18, 18 years old. Um, that seems kind of young to me. Uh, is there a, uh, is there an amendment there that you're interested in? No, sir. I was, I was just saying that uh, 18 years old, I remember 18, it's been a long time, but 18 years also. old seems to be uh, young for a commercial um, driver's license and I just want to make that a, a statement uh, mr. chairman for maybe future thought well, you know, uh, representative Powell why don't you comment on that I knew you would if I might <laughs> say it once upon a time you had 18 year olds who were treated like adults before we became such a nanny state nation <laughs> <laughs> we also had a lot of 18 year olds who were drafted to serve in time of war <laughs> And that once these folks reach that age of majority consent, then they should be treated like everybody else. And in this case, they're able to, under the federal regulations, they can drive intrastate, not interstate. The nanny staters of the federal government say you need to be 21 to drive interstate. So, so the point is that this is in compliance with federal law this right is now. In compliance. With that, federal that's, law. That, I think that's the whole point of the discussion. And big, bro big brother prevails. Response. <laughs> I think there might be some other people interested in some other bills. We're going to have to, to, to move along here uh, really quick. But in any event, thank you to the department for uh, for articulating your views on this bill, and thank you uh, to, the, to the attorneys that are representing them. And uh, Mr. Powell, uh, uh, this is your bill. And uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the committee, we're going to need uh, a, a motion uh, on the bill. And, and so moved. Is there a second? Okay. Yes. yes. The, the, yeah, I'm going to get to the amendments now. Okay. Mr. Powell, there's a there's a uh, motion and a second. Uh, would, uh, would you care to offer your amendments? Uh, certainly now? would, Mr. Chairman. On page five, uh, strike lines 155 through 163, and renumber accordingly. On page 15, strike section 11 in its entirety and renumber accordingly. And on page 16, strike line from 159 through 583, section 14, strike in its entirety and renumber accordingly. Okay, uh, you make that in the form of a motion? I certainly do. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, uh, we're, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, move all the amendments uh, at the same time. Uh, and uh, do I, we've heard, had the motion and a second. All in favor of the amendments of state say aye. aye. Like sign. Opposed? Okay, the motion's carried. Now we're in the posture of uh, voting on the bill. Uh, the bill, uh, this is a, a due pass uh, to the Motor, Vehicle, Motor Vehicles Committee for HB 323 as amended, uh, all in favor of that of, of that uh, motion, uh, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Thank you to the department. You're off to rules. Anybody in here that um, is going to, is going to have one approved today, uh, pending amendments or anything, 
um, remember that you got to go to the rules office and sign up to, to even have a chance of getting on the rules calendar. So uh, just a word to the wise. We're going to take up uh, House Bill 104 and uh, Representative Dudgeons. Are you, gonna, you can come over here. I, I don't think you're going to be standing there in, on an exceptionally long basis. Mr. Dudgeons is going to present to us the Omnibus Tag Bill. Absolutely. It only has one paragraph, Mr. Chairman, instead of all the pages you just did. On behalf of my seatmate, Representative Carson, uh, who's the number one signer on this bill, he's in ways and means with his fractional T -splos, um, fractional SPLOS bill, so he's pretty busy. But happy to bring you uh, uh, this bill, which adds the Appalachian Trail Plate as a specialty plate. Um, they've Appalachian Trail Plate has been successful. Over 1,800 have been uh, issued now. Uh, the AT Club, and we have some representatives here, is an amazing organization that actually essentially with all volunteer power provides a virtual free state or national park here in Georgia with Appalachian, the 75 miles of AT here in Georgia. I have hiked the entire AT in Georgia, um, not the whole thing. Um, it's a great, wonderful resource that brings people here to Georgia. People come here from all over the country, all over the world to through hike. I met a German and a Swiss guy on the trail who come here just to Georgia to hike the trail. It's an amazing service, and it's, it's definitely worthy of a specialty plate designation. Um, again, we have some guys here who can talk a little bit more about the AT Club, but I'd ask for your favorable consideration and ask, sir, for any questions. Thanks so much. Any questions of the, uh, the uh, stand-in author? <laughs> no questions on that. I know that there are a couple people who want to talk about this. Uh, we just want to welcome uh, these, uh, just for the committee's purposes, there are, there are uh, three tags that are associated with this. Uh, one is for the Atlanta Braves. Uh, most of them could not be here today simply because they're in Florida. Uh, <laughs> but there is one Brave here uh, that he would like to like to, to speak. Uh, and uh, Chairman Roberts, why don't you come up and say a word about the Braves uh, tag? Uh, before you do, this let me make sure everybody understands it's the Appalachian Trail, the Atlanta Braves, and the Veterans Tag is what we're considering today. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Looks like it's the only gentleman of the committee. See any ladies on there? Uh, we have the Atlanta Braves tag on there as well. You know, we we've got a lot of tags out there to represent a lot of different sporting events and universities throughout the state. Braves is not only Georgia's team, but it's America's team, and I just thought it would be fitting. They've done the work. They've got the prerequisites. They've got the number of tags sold. And actually, we have a member of the Braves organization here today, if you would like to hear from Greg, him. Greg, why don't you come up for a moment, Greg? I, I know you flew all the way back here from Florida, so you're due uh, to come up and uh, just comment on this from a Braves standpoint. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm Greg Heller, Senior Vice President and General Counsel for the Braves. I want to thank Chairman Roberts uh, and all the members of the committee. Uh, 32 days until opening day, so we're very excited. So a uh, pleasure to be here with you all today. Okay. Uh, Mr. Heller, can I ask you a, a question? This is kind of a personal question, but I'd like to ask you this question. Sure, please. Uh, is it true that for introducing this bill that uh, Chairman Roberts is going to get a tryout with, uh, with the Braves uh, this year? Beyond a tryout, I brought with me a minor league uniform player contract. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to discuss with Chairman Roberts after the proceedings. I hadn't heard about that, but I'm glad. I heard about that. You're my agent. <laughs> Okay, and uh, does anybody want to thank you, thank Mr. Howard? Really, really appreciate you being here. Does anybody want to speak on the, the veterans tag at all? Hello? Okay, uh, I think. Uh, pardon? Are you, are you a veteran? No, no. Oh, you're Appalachian Trail. Oh, you want to speak on the Appalachian Trail tag for a second? Okay. Uh, we're, uh, we're kind of pressed, but if you would, if you would uh, just give us your name. And tell us what you want to tell us about the Appalachian Trail tag. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, my name is John, John Ortigas. I'm the uh, secretary for GATC. I have with me a couple of gentlemen, Mike Rotman, who is the treasurer, and um, Tom Ottinger, who is with the Outreach Committee. Um, and I have a prepared talk here. With that. Well, we, we, need, we need you to be brief because we're out of this room in about 10 minutes. Uh, okay. Then um, let me just make it very brief then. Um, this le legislation would designate $10 per tag to go towards supporting the Appalachian Trail in Georgia. Money generated through this program will directly benefit the people of Georgia through maintenance of the Appalachian Trail and the trail corridor in, in Georgia, including the associated structures and connecting trails, conservation, preservation, protection of the trail corridor and adjacent sensitive environments in Georgia, public information and education efforts to improve the recreational experience and enjoyment of the hiking public, 
and outreach to Georgia groups and organizations, particularly youth, to increase awareness of wilderness and outdoor recreation. That's a very brief. Boy, that's a, that, that is probably <laughs> record time, and I, I, really, I, I really appreciate you, you doing that. I'm sorry that the rest of the group on the Appalachian Trail Clubs couldn't make it today because they don't have any knees left uh, <laughs> after trying to hike that, cha- that trail. Uh, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you coming today. Uh, are there any questions of any of the witnesses? Uh, asking for a motion on uh, HB 104. Second. Is there a second? All in favor of the passage of the substitute to House Bill 104, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Okay, that's great. Y'all got your tags. Move it on. Um, we're going we're gonna to take uh, House Bill 365, recognize uh, Representative Hitchens. Um, it's amazing to see you not in, in a uniform, but, uh, you know, that, that, that's uh, the next well, career. I've been on this side many times, and I'm carrying this legislation for uh, House Bill 365 of the Department of Public Safety, and I have several other agencies that uh, would be willing to speak, and if that if need be. But uh, I understand the consideration of time. I want to move this forward. But what this bill does simply uh, is is the proverbial simple bill. It changes the definition of passenger vehicles. And previously, if you look through lines 9 through 11, it, it defines passenger vehicles, and uh, it strikes out 10 passenger and puts in 15 passenger. Uh, the reason for the, the impetus for this is the fact that 15 passenger vans, as noted by the Department of Public Safety, uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, have a propensity for rolling over. Uh, they're utilized primarily to uh, to haul children, uh, school-aged children. The federal government has prohibited them from being used in the public schools, but it's my supposition that some of them are still out there. They're used by churches. They're used by boys and girls clubs, 4-H clubs to haul children. And uh, if, if we change the definition and make it a passenger vehicle, they'd be required to wear seatbelts, which they aren't now. This also closes the loop. Every other vehicle in the state has to, has to be, uh, every person has to be belted. This is the only exclusion. And uh, in the interest of safety, and the safety for our children, I think it's a, it's a positive bill. Thank you, Colonel Hitchens. And is, is there any uh, other discussion or co- questions for the, for the Colonel? I, I should say representative. I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm called, so used to saying that. I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, representative sure. Barr, what's your number 23? Representative, I have a question on who who would get the citation. Would it be the driver or would it be the passenger driver. in this situation? Driver it would be the driver. Okay. And the responsibility with children obviously lies with the driver to make sure that they're belted. I, I, our, our church has a van and so that's what's ours does, ours does right. too. Okay, thank you. Okay, then another question down number fifteen, Daryl. Okay, recognize you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, th- th- when we, we when you increase from ten to fifteen, now there are fifteen seat belts for each person in the in the in, the, in advance. Is that there, federal? That's a federal requirement. There's now, a right? requirement since 1964. All the vehicles have been required to have seat belts. So uh, I've, as some of these gentlemen have, we've lived through the era when We've grudgingly put seat belts and uh, required them to be utilized in vehicles. Uh, so they are 15. They're there. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for uh, Representative Hitchens? Seeing none. Thank you, sir, thank you. Uh, for um, uh, bringing this bill. Um, we've had seat belt bills uh, for a long, long time, and we did move up to, to, to cover pick 'em up trucks. Uh, uh, I think in 2011 or so, and. And that has substantially reduced the number of of injuries from accidents and uh, and, and the types of things that Representative Hitchens was talking about. And it's proved to be extremely valuable. I think if the governor's office of highway safety was here, they they testify to that as well as public safety. They're, they're here. Oh, they're, they're I didn't see you, Harris. I'm sorry. Well, you just want to stand up and comment and say yes or. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. All right. Department of Public recorded. Safety, the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, the National Highway Traf- Traffic Safety Administration, and Children's Health Care of Atlanta are all here to support the bill. All here to support the bill. Well, we appreciate it. And Taggart's Driving School is here to support the bill, too. That, that, that's, uh, uh, that, that's true. Look, uh, you know, there, there has always been, uh, there always was controversy about seatbelt bills, uh, in, but I think we're past that point in time, and I, I'm hopeful that the committee. We'll give that a due pass recommendation today, and I'm going to ask for a motion uh, on this House Bill 365. There's a motion to pass. Second? There's a second. All in favor? Yes. Uh, yeah, it is a substitute to, uh, to House Bill 365. Thank you. I'm going too fast here, Terry. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, all in favor of uh, passage of the substitute to House Bill 365, signify by saying aye. Opposed, like sign. 
Thank you, uh, Representative Hitchens. You're on to rules. Okay, uh, we got a few minutes left, and this is this may be an interesting bill. Uh, I'm going to recognize uh, uh, Representative Pack to bring uh, House Bill 475. Uh, Representative Pack, we will at least get started on this bill today. If we do not finish on this bill today, I promise you we will conclude this after the subcommittee meetings tomorrow. Okay? But why don't you tell us about this bill? Since I'm a signatory on this, this might be yes. something I'm interested in. Thank too. you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I bring before you consideration House Bill 475. Uh, as you know, it, as a legislative body, we've been focused on trying to make Georgia the most business-friendly environment um, along the southeast and all over the, uh, the nation. And this is actually one of those initiatives. Uh, Georgia is actually uh, one of the few states that d does not allow the executive branch to enter into driver's license reciprocity, partly because the statutory authority granted to the governor and also the commissioner of driver services, uh, they don't have any discretion to negotiate the terms of the driver's licenses. So this bill seeks to address that by it's an enabling legislation allowing the commissioner of driver services to negotiate uh, into reciprocity agreements with foreign nations. Currently, uh, the governor enters into the similar transactions with other states, and all we are doing is expanding that to um, uh, giving the commissioner the ability to do so. Doesn't mean that they're going to enter into it with a particular uh, country. It gives them the authority to start negotiations. Um, this bill is fully backed by the governor's office and also the Department of Economic Development. Which, who's here to uh, speak in support of it. In addition, the Georgia Chamber and the Metro Atlanta Chamber uh, and everybody that I've spoken to are uh, in support of it or have no position on it. I'll, I'll be happy to entertain any questions. And that, uh, that concludes your, uh, your remarks on it. Are there questions uh, for Representative Pack? You got to light your button if you got a question on uh, on this this issue. Let me just say that uh, that I have been uh, I have been the guest of uh, not the guest, but I I have had, uh, spoken to uh, the Korean Council uh, about this, and this this issue has been here uh, for a number of years, uh, and and this is probably without giving carte blanche uh, opportunities, it really it really favors a a, a very tailored approach by the state and by the department to granting these, these reciprocity licenses. The other thing is that with the growth of places like Kia and other places in, in the state, there is a, there's a major requirement uh, for us to have good economic development uh, opportunities, uh, and, which and would probably be covered by this type of a bill. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I may follow up on that. On top of that, if you, if you could imagine that one of our top trading partner uh, with the state of Georgia is actually Canada. Uh, you, as a Georgia businessman, can't go to Canada and drive on the streets of Canada, despite the fact that you speak and, and, and read all the signs and, and, and they, they abide by the, virtually every uh, similar uh, rules as we do. There are 28 states that allow reciprocity, and Florida, Alabama, and South Carolina are three of those. Uh, so we, we've gone, we heard uh, complaints and also some concerns about uh, uh, in terms of offering a package of a, a business-friendly environment, that this is, in fact, one of those issues that we would like to um, take one step uh, towards fixing. Any questions for uh, Representative Pack? Anybody else want to speak on this bill? Boy, this is a deadly silent and, and audience. Department of Driver Services is obviously in support of this bill. Well, you be recognized for a motion on your number number twenty four. You got to push that button and let me give the opportunity of 23. Okay. All right, Representative Barr, why don't you make a motion? Make a motion, do pass, sir. So you're making a motion, the House Bill uh, uh, 475 uh, has a do pass recommendation. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. All in favor, uh, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> like sign. Thank you, Mr. Pack. Thank uh, you. We're, we committee. are moving on. Uh, there is a subcommittee meeting uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, at uh, I think it's two, two o'clock. Yeah, and you've got notices out. Uh, that uh, that concludes our business for today. Thank you all for coming. We're adjourned. <laughs>